Now, if you haven't checked out my other video, three absolute essentials to buying a gaming laptop in 2021, I'll have a link in the description down below. You probably should go watch that before watching this video because you'll want to keep those three things in mind. That's like context that's really important for this video going into this one. And I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, so just go watch that one then watch this one. So you're browsing through Best Buy and you see a nice RTX 2000 series laptop for $300 off. And you go, holy crap, is that a good deal? Because you're also looking at the RTX 3000 series laptops over here. They cost maybe $500 more, but maybe it's worth it. What's up? My name is Brandon. And I'm here to help you figure out which laptop you should buy that's gonna provide the best bang for the buck and last as long as possible and just try to make you as happy as possible because that's really where I benefit and get the most joy in reviewing products when someone emails me or whatever and they're like the laptop I got is awesome I thanks so much for the recommendation like I, I, I love that so in this video I'm gonna talk about the crucial differences between an RTX 2000 series and an RTX 3000 series and then I'm going to talk about the key things to consider outside of just the GPU and lastly I'm also going to talk about how to calculate your performance per dollar for an RTX 2000 series laptop that's on sale versus a brand new RTX 3000 series laptop that has increased performance but also costs more now, I also want to briefly mention that I've created a comprehensive spreadsheet comparing all the RTX 3000 series laptops. Now, I've rated all of these laptops on price to performance, CPU performance, GPU performance, and premium features. And I've also sorted the list by price. So if you're trying to find a laptop between $1,500 and $2,000, it's very easy to see every model that's currently available. There's a link in the video description down below if you want to check it out after this video. Now, if you do decide to use the links in the spreadsheet down below, know that some of the links are affiliated links and they do go to help support my channel. I would not be able to do this full time without your support. So thank you very much. Now when comparing RTX 2000 series and 3000 series laptops, the first go-to benchmark I look at is the TimeSpy GPU score. Now TimeSpy has three scores. There's the combined score, the GPU score, and the CPU score. The GPU score is really the only score here that represents GPU bound game performance. Now the one thing to keep in mind with TimeSpy scores is that it does not represent the RTX and DLSS increased performance that the RTX 3000 series provides over the RTX 2000 series. So even if an RTX 2000 series GPU provides the exact same performance as an RTX 3000 series GPU, because of the improved RT and tensor cores in the RTX 3000 series, you're going to see improved overall ray tracing and DLSS performance in titles like Cyberpunk 2077. Now a very good example of this is my Strix G17 that got 10,800 in Time Spy, which is only a little bit higher than my Alienware Area 51M. But in Cyberpunk 2077, we saw a 22% performance gain. So this goes to show you that in RTX and DLSS titles, you may get more optimized performance out of the 3000 series GPUs, though I did not see this in every title. You can see that in Watch Dogs Legion, we had similar performance, as well as Red Dead Redemption 2, though that doesn't use RTX or DLSS. Now since most gaming laptops are still only 1080p resolution, it's important to keep in mind that at 1080p you are more likely to be CPU bound than GPU bound in a lot of the games you play. So in games like Far Cry 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, CS, Go, and Rainbow Six Siege, the performance you see in these games will be primarily based on how good of a CPU you end up getting. And this is one of the main reasons why getting one of the new RTX 3000 series laptops with a Ryzen 5000 series CPU is really attractive because you're getting an increased CPU performance for those CPU bound games. And then you're also going to have the increased performance from the RTX 3000 series for the GPU bound games. Perhaps the best comparison I can make between two laptops that are in roughly the same chassis is the Strix G17 with an RTX. RTX 2070 versus the Strix G17 with an RTX 3070. We saw a 17 FPS gain in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this translates roughly to a 28% gain in performance with the new RTX 3000 series. So what this means to me is that if you can get an RTX 2000 series at a great price, then it can still be worth considering an RTX 2000 series. And if you already have an RTX 2000 series, that's a great machine and you're happy with the frame rates that you're getting, there's not really really a desperate need or anything like that to push yourself to buy an RTX 3000 series laptop. There are certainly some performance gains to be had if you get an RTX 3000 series machine. It's just not going to be massive for some people, 
but will be massive for others. It's just gonna be so dependent on what the TDP of each individual machine is, as well as does it include a MUX switch? What game are you playing? Is it a GPU bound game? Is it a CPU bound game? Does the new laptop have a Ryzen 5000 series in it? Or potentially coming up here, an Intel 11th gen processor? What's the TDP of the processor? There's so many different factors going on here. Now, something to keep in mind with RTX 2000 series versus 3000 series laptops is that the 3000 series laptops may be improved in a number of important ways, including fan design, perhaps additional heat pipes, better keyboards, brighter backlights, new and improved QHD displays. And if you wanna take advantage of any of these new features, you're gonna to have to get the new model version, not the old one. A great example of this is the Zephyrus G15, having a lot of these improvements that the Zephyrus M15 from last year just didn't have, which makes the Zephyrus G15 vastly superior compared to last year's model. Now, another thing to keep in mind with RTX 3000 series GPUs is that they can be paired with an Intel 10th gen CPU or a new Ryzen 5000 series CPU, which is very power efficient and allows the GPU to boost into a higher TDP more often in more titles. So if possible, I do recommend the Ryzen 5000 series. Now that said, it is still perfectly fine buying an Intel 10th gen CPU series if you're getting it at the right price. An example of a great Intel CPU bang for the buck laptop is the Aorus 15G, which I actually have right here. So this guy right here is an impressive piece of kit for only $2,000. I've only done my initial testing on it, but it's a very impressive laptop with very bright backlight. It's a gorgeous machine that has a lot of great features, including a MUX switch. If you want to know if an RTX 3000 series laptop has a MUX switch or not, I've included it in my spreadsheet in a whole column dedicated to it, and I've managed to collect the data on almost all the laptops on the market now directly from the manufacturers, and if not, I've quoted sources for where I found all the information on the spreadsheet. Now, Intel will be releasing 11th gen laptop CPU use soon and I've already started seeing some of the RTX 3000 series laptops go on sale like the Alienware M15 and M17 was on sale the last couple days they're no longer on sale now I am monitoring the prices on all of the laptops on the market and I'll be tracking which laptops go on sale I've added a dedicated section of the spreadsheet to just these laptops that are now on sale now these sales do indicate to me that these laptops were either overpriced or Intel will be releasing their 11th gen processors pretty soon and these manufacturers are trying to empty their stock. Something else to keep in mind when it comes to RTX 2000 versus 3000 series is what premium features does an RTX 2000 series laptop have versus a 3000 series because for example if you were to go with an RTX 2000 series but you get a lot of premium features like a much better display and Windows Hello, maybe a better keyboard, maybe better backlights or RGBs on the laptop for the same price then maybe sacrificing a little bit of performance is still worth it. So let's talk about how to calculate performance per dollar. Now, two of the best metrics for calculating performance per dollar in a simple and easy to understand way is using the TimeSpy GPU score along with the Cinebench R20 or R23 score. In every laptop review that I make on my channel, I compare the CPU and GPU performance using these numbers and I compare it on the per pound basis as well as a per dollar basis. And the way I calculate this is pretty simple. I'll just do time spy GPU points and divide it by the cost of the laptop. Taking the Strix G17, for example, we've got a time spy GPU score of 10,809, and we divide that by 1799, and we get 6.01 points per dollar. This is the highest points per dollar that I have seen so far this year. And when we take the Cinebench R20 score, we get 5,201, and divide that by 1799, we get 2.89 points per dollar, and we can see that this is a good CPU performance per dollar, now you can calculate these numbers for yourself on any laptop that you can find reliable benchmarks for. So if you can get a TimeSpy GPU score or a Cinebench R20 score and then divide that by the laptop's price, you'll be able to get your overall points per dollar for your GPU and your CPU and then you can compare those numbers that you've calculated versus the laptops that I've tested here. Now keep in mind in all of my testing, I do maximum fans and the highest performance profiles possible just 
to see what a laptop is fully capable of. So in conclusion, should you buy an RTX 2000 series laptop or a 3000 series laptop? For me, it all comes down to performance per dollar. Is the RTX 2000 series laptop on sale enough to really get a great bang for the buck where it's competing with the new RTX 3000 series? If it is, go for the RTX 2000 series. That said, many of the new RTX 3000 series laptops are offering the best performance per dollar that I have ever seen in gaming laptops, and it is a massive bump up in performance per dollar compared to the RTX 2000 series, especially at launch. But you do have to keep in mind that not all of the RTX 3000 series is priced as competitively, so know that there are good deals out there on RTX 3000 series laptops, and there are bad deals. And if you want some help in figuring out which ones are good and bad, Again, there's a spreadsheet linked in the description down below. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, smash that like button. And if you wanna see more of my reviews on gaming tech in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell. I will see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Pizza.